Ian, thank you so much for joining me. Sure, my pleasure. Of course, you're speaking here at COGX. How do you feel that AI will impact geopolitical order? I think that AI is transformative for the geopolitical order, uh, both in good ways and in problematic ways. In good ways, because I think that AI is going to drive a new globalization. So many stories these days, is globalization dead? Is it stalled? Is it fragmenting? Is it a new Cold War? All of these things. And yet, what we've seen in the last 50 years, the emergence of a global middle class, I think is facilitated dramatically by a new technology where anyone with a smartphone will have access to it. It will ramp up human capital everywhere, and that's very exciting. That means much more ability for no matter what the country, you, you to expand your middle class. Um, capabilities in medicine, in education, improving efficiencies in almost every industrial and scientific process you can uh, you know, imagine. In other words, I'm an enthusiast about what this technology will do for the world. But, but um, AI is also as a distributed technology that everyone has access to and can disrupt things. It's not like nuclear weapons. It's not like an arms control race. Anyone out there can use AI to code. Anyone out there can use AI to hack for malware, can use AI to develop you know, new vaccines, but also new viruses, uh, you know, military uh, drones, uh, you name it. And, and as a consequence, we are seeing non-state actors, particularly the technology companies that wield the algorithms that are driving this new AI with far more power than anyone else has ever seen from a non-state actor. And that means that the governance that occurs is going to have to be not just about governments, but the technology companies too. We're not ready for that, uh, but that's the reality. Do you think global leaders and policymakers truly have a grasp, though, of what's ahead? Not yet, uh, but they are getting up to speed uh, very, very quickly. A year ago, I can't think of a single conversation I had with a global leader um, anywhere in the world where they were asking about AI, where they were fundamentally concerned about the implications of AI for their political systems, for the global economy, for national security. Today. I can barely think of a single global leader that doesn't ask me about it. Uh, it has gone from zero to 60, as they say. I mean, almost overnight. These technologies, which have been under development for 40 years, have reached their asymptotic point. They are suddenly like just expanding with impact on everything that matters. Um, and of course, uh, now you have uh, a process through the G7 you have a process in the EU, you have a process in the UK, you have a process in the US, you have a process in China. I mean, all of these organizations, all of these governance mechanisms are grappling with AI and they are learning what it is, what it can do, and learning what they don't know. They're learning what the technology companies uh, have the capacity to do and how they need to work with them. And I, I'm glad to see that. How can you regulate this kind of technology, though? Uh, well, first, we need to understand what it is. So, uh, you know, you think about global climate change and you couldn't regulate a response to climate change until we agreed that climate change was happening, until we knew what the dangers were. We now have a process at the United Nations called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And despite all the disinformation, despite all the polemics around climate change, everyone now agrees it's caused by humanity. It's not cyclical. Everyone agrees we've got 1.2 degrees of warming so far. We all know how much deforestation there is. We all know how much carbon, how much methane is in the atmosphere. And by doing that, you then allow if different actors, countries, companies, scientists, to respond to the state of play, to the real state of play, right? We don't have that yet for AI. We need it. So we need a United Nations-driven process, an intergovernmental panel on artificial intelligence with the governments, the scientists, the companies together to understand the basic state of play of what AI can do, who the principal actors are, what the opportunities are, what the dangers are. We need to have ground truth among everyone on what this challenge actually is. You can't govern it 
until you know what it is. We aren't there yet, but we're moving there quickly. I note that the um, head of the European Union, Ursula von der Leyen, just called uh, for such an organization in the past days. My friend, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has been saying the same. I, I, I view this as absolutely principle, foundational. From there, um, one of the things that we need is a recognition that AI will sit on top of geopolitics. It's not going to be something that we can compete over. And I say that because it's open source. I say that because it's decentralized, because everybody, it's not like nukes, where you have a few countries that have them and you stop everyone else from getting it. Everyone is gonna have access to the most advanced AI models. And everyone will be able to use those models for good and for bad. Uh, and that means, like the financial markets, we need a technocratic approach. We're gonna need the equivalent of a financial stability board, a geotechnology stability board, where the governments and the tech companies together try to ensure that we don't regulate people out of existence, but we have the ability to respond to ensure that the market of AI globally continues to function. As we know, anyone can have a, a run on financial markets. And when it happens, when you've got a bunch of people on Reddit saying, GameStop to the moon, the regulators have to step in. And companies have to step in to ensure that like banks continue to work, right? That is, we're gonna need something like that for AI. It cannot be the US versus China. This is too systemic.